here at the uh, Hall of History. We're going to take our look at uh, America entering World War I. Well, Americans didn't jump right into the war. It started in 1914, and uh, it went on for a couple, three years before America got into it. And uh, Americans figured themselves neutral. Again, we were surrounded by the uh, two, uh, two large oceans, and uh, Americans didn't think things happened on the continent, especially the European continent, were really our problem. Uh, the socialists at the time viewed the war as a capitalist imperialist struggle between Germany and England. We also had many in immigrants from Europe, especially uh, Great Britain and uh, Germany, and of course they would uh, side with, most, for the most part, with the countries that they came from. It was interesting, you know, Ireland at this time was uh, occupied for, for a long time by uh, Great Britain, and uh, many of the Irish here was hoping that the Germans would win the war so Ireland could gain their independence from uh, Great Britain. Well, our economic and political ties really lended ourselves to uh, to backing the British. Uh, we had much trade with the uh, with, with Britain and France, and also our political democratic ties with the uh, with the British uh, people. You know, especially you know we were at one time a uh, British colony, so it wasn't too uh, unnatural for us to uh, side with the British. Interesting little uh, oh sign I saw poster I saw at the time. Said, well, just keep making barbed wire to keep American cows where they belong. Uh, there's many businesses that did not want to uh, get into this whole idea of supporting one side or the other. Well, eventually there were several different events, culmination of which got us into the war. One was a British blockade. The British had a large navy, and they were uh, blockading German ports. And therefore, any trade we did have with Germany uh, didn't happen anymore. And so, uh, you know, that was one thing that got us into the war. German U-boats, Untersee boats, uh, German uh, U-boats were, were sinking uh, commercial vessels carrying war material on the high seas. And uh, probably the, the sinking that really caused a real fury, especially in the, uh, in the uh, press, was the sinking of the Lusitania. The Lusitania was sunk off, uh, well, I believe it was southern Ireland and there's 128 Americans involved. Well, the Germans, and somewhat understandably so, the, uh, they sunk the Lusitania because it was carrying war munitions. And I don't know if this, this uh, video is gonna link up or not when I produce this as a, uh, as a, uh, a video of my own. So if it doesn't, we'll watch it in class. Uh, also at this time, 1916 election, uh, uh, Woodrow Wilson narrowly won re-election. Also, at this time, the, uh, the Russian government, the Russian monarchy, was overthrown. Many Americans did not want to go on the side of, the, uh, of Great Britain and France and Russia because Russia was under this very uh, cruel-to-a-lot-of-people monarchy. But once that got overthrown, uh, the interim Russian government was somewhat representative, and it took that uh, play right out of the equation. Uh, the other big one was a uh, intercepted... Uh, note from the, uh, the German ambassador to the uh, Mexican government and this was intercepted by British agents and they uh, said the, uh, if uh, Mexico would go to the war with the United States you know they could uh, reclaim all their uh, territories they've lost in the southwest and that really uh, got the American public especially with the press at this time just you know, you know up on uh, up in arms. Uh, finally on April 2nd 1917 Wilson called for war and uh, shortly thereafter, Congress uh, approved it. Uh, interesting, here's a uh, picture of the Zimmerman note. Of course, you can see it's uh, done in code uh, from the German legation there in, uh, in Mexico City and so forth. So it's kind of interesting to note this, you know, this is a piece of American history. Well, once you declared war, we had to mobilize. And we did have a very large army at the time, somewhere around 200,000 men. And so we instituted the uh, Selective Service Act. And uh, you can see in the little uh, picture on the bottom of this page that all males between the ages of 21 and 30 were to be uh, included in this selection for the uh, U.S. military. Also, at this time, mass production really stepped up the United States. Uh, all the war supplies, war material, you know, all of a sudden you, you just went from, you know, doing some to you got to produce thousands upon thousands upon thousands of the different type of material that uh, 
that war entails. Anything you can think of, just multiply it by an untold amount. It was interesting, though, uh, shipyard workers were given deferred status from the Selective Service Act. This is because America needed it really to increase their navy and also their uh, merchant marine. We really didn't have a very large navy and merchant marine, and we needed a lot of ships. Uh, many ships were getting sunk by the, uh, the German U-boats. And so the shipyard workers were given deferred status from the Selective Service Act. Uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce emphasized the importance of shipyard work because a lot of people thought, you know, why are they getting off uh, when everybody else has got to, uh, you know, go actually uh, go to war. And uh, it was also the uh, shipyard started fabricating and standardized parts. Before this, uh, many of the parts were just made in the shipyard. Now, when you started having standardized parts, the fabrication could take place off the shipyard in different factories, and then they could be brought in. And it made for a much much quicker uh, assembly of the uh, of the naval vehicle, or the of the naval ships uh, here. And this won't be the first or the last time the government took over commercial and private ships uh, to round out the fleet. 